Today, we're going to be learning how to make these God rays really easily using compositing such that it's really, really light on your computer. And you can do this even using a low end PC without spending too much time rendering. So let's get right into it. Start off by opening a default scene and delete the default cube. Then add in your text by tapping Shift A, text, and then rotating it on the x axis by 90 degrees, and then going to the text properties over here, changing the alignment to center, and also changing the font to any font of your choosing by clicking these buttons. So I'm going to use answer regular for now. Now you can write whatever text you want. So I'm going to go with hope. And then I'm going to change the spacing between the characters by coming in the text properties and changing character spacing and increasing it to, I think 1.5 looks good. Now that I have this, I have to place the camera to observe this. So I'm going to select the pre-existing camera, Alt G to clear location and Alt R to clear rotation, then rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees then grab it on the Y axis and just move it back. Click zero to go into the camera view, grab it on the Y axis and just move it till you feel like it's proper. However, I do want to release this as a reel on Instagram. So I'm gonna go to my output properties and change the resolution to 1080 and make the Y axis 1920. And then I'm going to grab it on the Y axis and just move it back till we have the word covered up. Now we also want to centralize this. So I think we can take this and center it on the vertical axis as well. So now it's perfectly at the center of the frame. Now let's start creating the general look. So let's go into the rendered view give the background by going to the world properties and changing the color to something, maybe a really light blue-ish color, maybe a bit darker as well. Okay, maybe something like this. And then let's change the color of hope by adding a new material and changing the base color to something much darker. maybe this works. Now we're going to have to first animate hope so that there is some amount of motion in the scene. So what, how we're going to do that is we're going to get the letters to come into place by appearing from a central location. So I'm going to hit shift A, add mesh, a cube, and then I'm just going to grab it on the X axis. And while pressing control, it'll snap to the grid so I will move it exactly there. And then I will duplicate this by Shift D and then Control, and then just move it two units to the left. Now, these are right now covering the letters, but we want to see them. So we're going to go to the object properties over here, go to viewport display, and display them as a wire. So now we can actually see through it, but we can still see the cube to know exactly where it is. So we're going to change this to right cube or we'll call it cube right and this one we're going to do the same thing we're going to display it as a wire and we're going to change this to cube left and these buttons over here is to show if it's going to appear when you actually render it so right now if i was just to render this particular image it's still going to show as a cube and that's why you can't really see anything because the cube is clearly visible we don't want that so we're going to switch this off and switch this off. So now when you actually hit render, it's not going to render that particular cube. And that is exactly what we want. So now it's just see through, the cube doesn't come out in the renders. But we want these cubes so that we can add a Boolean modifier to the text. Now, sadly, the text does not have a Boolean modifier as you can see over here. So we have to convert this from a text object to an actual mesh object. So we click object, convert, and then we click on mesh. Now that this is a mesh, it's all one single mesh, and we want each one to be an individual letter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, click A, 
and then we're going to hit P and click separate by loose parts. So now each of them is going to be one single object. So once you hit tab again, we go back into our object mode, but all of them have their origins over here, but we want each one to have its own origin. So we're going to click on object, set origin and origin to geometry. So now each letter has its own origin and now we can animate these. So let's first make sure that we have the animation settings right. It's going to be a 10 second animation, so length 300. And we also have to change our frame rate to 30 frames per second. Now, let's assume that the word is going to be formed three seconds before the end. So maybe 210, because 3 into 30 is 90. So 300 minus 90 is going to be 210. And then I'm just going to hit I with all of them selected. I, location, rotation, scale, or just location is fine as well. So let's just go with just location. So now you have all three of them, a keyframe at 210. Now we can say that let's assume that it'll start moving after the first two seconds. So let's go to 60 and then take the P, grab it, grab just the P. So let's select the P, grab it on the X axis and move it till it's just outside the cube. Okay, hit I, location. Then the E, same thing, grab it, X, just beside here, I location. Then grab the O, grab it, X, move it till it's outside its cube, hit I, location. Same thing with the H, grab it, X, just till it's outside, I location. So now we have to actually make them disappear. So let's take the e P, let's go to the modifiers, add in the Boolean modifier, and click on intersect, but with this object, which is the right cube. So now that we have this, we can do the exact same thing with the E. So add Boolean modifier intersection with the right cube. Then take the H, same thing, Boolean modifier intersection left cube, and then O Boolean intersect object left cube. So there. Now, when you actually play the animation, you can see how they all appear to form the word hope from the center. So that is the animation that we were looking for. Before we go to any other details, what about the actual God rays? So we're going to do that using compositing. Normally, I would have tried to use something like creating volume cubes and then using volume and a light source to create these rays but there's a much simpler way to do this. We want the light source to be at the back. So let's just add in a light source and see that absolutely nothing happens. So if we take this light source, we increase its power, let's say maybe a thousand or something. It's great here, but the moment we just move it back on the Y axis, it's like it's not even there. It doesn't even matter. However, we can just render out this particular scene or this frame. We just take an arbitrary frame, hit render, render image. We let it render and then we close it. Now we can go to compositing and click on use nodes. And it's going to take the rendered frame that we rendered and then we can now mess around with it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to move these aside because we're going to add in things over here but we also want to see what we're doing. So for that, we need to add in a viewer node. Shift A, search for viewer, and then grab it and place it here. But since we're going to make changes and we want that to be seen on both the viewer and the composite, that if we connect it here, we'd have to create the changes on both this branch and this branch. So a nice thing that you could do is you can click Shift, right click, and just drag over a line, and that creates a node. So now you can just connect that node over here and we can just make changes over on this side. So let's just move that out. This effect is literally called sunbeams. So we're going to take sunbeams and we have to add sunbeams to the image. For that, we have to mix it in. So let's mix and place the mix over here and then have the sunbeams and put the image into the sunbeam and put that in right here. 
Now everything goes black and that's because we've set our ray length to zero. So if you actually start increasing our ray length, you can see how the rays are. And uh, yeah, that definitely doesn't look great. And that's because we have our mix mode to mix, but we don't actually want to mix it. We want to either add or multiply or darken. I tend to use multiply or darken as you can actually see the differences. So this is how it looks when it's being multiplied. Let's change the ray length a bit. Uh, let's make it 0 0.8 maybe. So there we go. You can see the rays coming out and actually conforming to the shape, the shadows are being formed. However, if you have add, which is what most areas will do, I feel like you can't quite see the rays that well in a light background. So if you have a dark background, it works out really well, but I don't see that effect actually happening in these regions. It's really hard to tell. And that's why I prefer to use multiply, which actually darkens the scene quite a bit, but the effect of the shadows comes out really nicely in my opinion. Apart from multiply, you can also use darken. And what that would do is it won't create the letters to become darker. So if it was on multiply, you can see that these letters actually become dark and becomes quite black rather than the original color that you had. So sometimes that works out because if you did have a light source behind the object, it would appear black and you wouldn't be able to make out the color too well. So if that's the look that you're going for, it does make a lot of sense. And that's why I think I'm going to go ahead with that. But many a times you really want the color of the letters to also be seen. So in that case, you can change, change it to darken and the color remains. So this is how you can actually use compositing to get the effect. So now that you have the compositing set up, when you hit render, it's going to automatically composite this as well. And you can render out the animation. But I don't want to just render out the animation because right now it's going to look pretty empty. The entire sides are just gone. Let's select the camera, go to viewport display and change passport out. Let's switch off overlays and see how empty this looks. I would want some sort of animation or presence up here and down here. And I have no idea what I'll be placing because I haven't practiced this part of the tutorial. So let's hit shift A maybe a torus let's change the parameters let's change the minor radius to maybe half of what it currently is so let's just say by two now let's rotate on the x-axis 90 degrees let's scale it up to so switch off overlays let's control two to give it a subdivision of level two also object shade smooth but some sort of motion i want this to move so if we do some rotation, it can't be seen. So let's actually add in a new texture for this. Let's go here to the plus, click and drag to open a new scene. Let's change it to the shader editor and to remove this. And now let's give it some sort of a wave texture and then have that rotate. So I'm now going to just select this torus. I'm going to add in a driver for the Y rotation. So if we go to the object properties, the rotation about Y, let's just add in a driver here, hash frame by, let's say 30. Let's change the playback to frame dropping so that we see how fast it's rotating way too fast. So change a hash frame by maybe a hundred. Okay, I also feel like rather than doing that, maybe we can have that rotate. But yeah, this sort of a thing is so much better. So we're just gonna do hash frame by one hundred to the phase offset. Okay, by ten to the phase offset. All right, that looks really good. Shift D to duplicate it, then scale it up. Okay, 
Now we take a look. Now let's make sure that the other one is rotating in the opposite direction. So by minus 100. And now, yep, off the direction. Rotation in the opposite direction. Yep, I like this. All right, so now we have the two objects that's filling up the region. We have the letter and now if we were to just render one of these, we can actually make sure that everything looks nice. So just render out one image. And then after, after it renders, it's actually gonna composite the light rays onto it. So now let's take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, I think that's fine for what I wanted to go for. So another thing that you could actually note is that this compositing, you can actually animate these values as well. So if you wanted to eventually not give out rays towards the end, you want the rays to stop, then you could actually like go to maybe 260 or something and then add a keyframe here. So let's just add in a keyframe here and then go to frame 300 and reduce the factor down to zero. So now it's gonna be just the text. Okay, I to add in a keyframe. And in fact, and maybe since the entire word is formed at 210 itself, I can actually grab this and move it to 230 and move this also back by just 20 frames. So there you go. So now you'll be able to actually see how it changes over time. A few things that you should do before rendering, change the output folder. So Godray's animation, you can accept it right here. Change file format to FFmpeg video. Encoding, make sure that it is MPEG4. Perceptually lossless. Now, a few more things that you have to make sure is save the file once. All right, so now the only thing that you have left is to render and hit render animation. With that, you will actually get this particular animation created pretty fast. You could animate different text, maybe lyrics to a song, this, that, whatever, some nice quote. It's all up to you. Have fun with it and stay creative.